Hello everybody, welcome to Scrap Science. So this is just going to be a short video in preparation for a much longer video later on. If you remember a fair while back, uh, maybe eight or nine months ago, um, you'll remember that we made a video about generating potassium permanganate from manganese metal using electrolysis. This was one of my favorite videos uh, I've ever done on the channel um, and I really want to revisit the project because um, there were a couple of things I didn't like about that synthesis. First of all, um, I wasn't actually able to get any permanganate to crystallize out at the end of the reaction, um, so I was a little bit disappointed and I'd like to try it again and actually get some crystals of solid potassium permanganate. I think that'd be really cool. And then second, the largest flaw of the process was that the starting material for the reaction was manganese metal, which in most cases is actually harder to get than potassium permanganate itself. You can see here, this is a chunk of manganese that I used for the process. Um, I had to buy this off eBay and it wasn't particularly expensive, but you know, it was a little bit hard to find. So basically trying the reaction again, uh, we don't want to use the less available manganese metal and we want our starting material to be the much more available manganese sulfate. Manganese sulfate is of course much easier to find online and if you really need to, uh, you can even make it from the even more commonly available manganese dioxide, which is present in uh, lots of types of batteries. Anyway, you can see what I've got here is around 100 milliliters of a manganese sulfate solution. Uh, I made this, extracted it and purified it from all of my manganese waste from the manganese chemistry that I've done over the past year. Um, so this is actually quite pure and quite concentrated manganese sulfate solution. In this video, we will convert some of this manganese sulfate in solution into manganese metal and in another video quite far off into the future because I probably won't have the time to make any more videos for a few months um, we will convert the manganese that we generate um, into potassium permanganate. So remembering back once again around about a year ago um, we remember that we have actually done this reaction before. We have made manganese metal from manganese sulfate and we did it by electrolysis of manganese sulfate with a diaphragm electrolysis cell. The process is gonna be pretty much exactly the same as what we did in that video. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how it all works. You can check out that previous video if you'd like to know more. But the only real tiny difference between that video and what we're gonna be doing here is in this video we're specifically trying to plate manganese metal onto a titanium substrate which I have here in the form of a small titanium rod. We want to plate it onto titanium because we want a good electrical connection to the manganese metal when we use it to make our potassium permanganate. Um, I've tried plating manganese onto graphite as well before um, that never seemed to work really well. It made um, some kind of insulating layer between the graphite and the manganese, I think, which prevented it from being usable. Uh, so I'm hoping that if we plate it onto titanium, it might make an effective manganese electrode. Anyway, I will set up the cell and we will get straight to making our manganese. And here we have, the cell is all ready to go. Uh, I have the DC power supply hooked up correctly. If we get a look at our cell, uh, you can see we have a bottom of a milk bottle uh, to hold the whole solution. I have filled the anode chamber uh, with a dilute solution of sulfuric acid um, and soon I will fill the cathode chamber with our manganese sulfate solution. I'm using two graphite rods uh, as anodes. Um, they will fall apart but they'll work for the process and I have, if we have a look down in there, the titanium cathode dangling into our cathode compartment um, which will be plated in our manganese eventually. We have a clay pot diaphragm separating the cathode and the anode. Uh, this prevents um, manganese ions from being oxidized on the anode to form manganese dioxide um, since we're only filling the cathode compartment with the manganese sulfate. So uh, adding the manganese sulfate solution now to the cathode compartment and turning on our electrolysis. 
My DC power supply, you can see, says that there's zero amps flowing. Uh, there is actually current flowing through the cell. Um, this power supply just isn't good at measuring low currents. I'll show you what's happening. Uh, what's happening is exactly what we expect to see uh, on the anode. We are generating oxygen gas as water is oxidized into hydrogen ions and oxygen gas. And on the cathode, if we get some light in there. There we are, you can see the major product right now is the generation of hydrogen gas. And that is going to be the major product throughout the rest of the process. The formation of manganese metal on the electrode is a relatively minor process because hydrogen is just so easy to form on the cathode that uh, forming manganese only happens uh, at a very slow rate. Anyway, the current will rise over time as the electrolyte soaks into the clay pot diaphragm. So that's nothing to worry about. I will probably set the current to a maximum of a quarter of an amp, I think is a good um, amount of current for the electrodes we have and the size of our cell. And look at that already, after just five minutes, we've already hit our target current of a quarter of an amp. So this is good to just leave going for a few hours at least um, to get a good coating of manganese on our titanium strip. In fact, maybe if we have a look now, we might even see some manganese forming already. Oh uh, yeah, there's definitely something forming on our titanium strip. I don't know how well it's adhering to the surface, but we'll leave that going for another few hours and we'll check back up on it. Alrighty, two hour update. Um, we've had the cell running for approximately 120 minutes now and it seems like we are actually plating uh, some manganese onto our cathode. Couple of things to note. Um, first, I had the cell running at a quarter of an amp for 15 minutes and I checked up on the cathode and it seemed like the manganese plating on the titanium was really low quality and kind of flaked off really easily. Um, in order to fix that problem, I restarted the cell, cleaned off the titanium cathode and everything uh, and instead made the current a lot lower. Uh, it's approximately 90 to 100 milliamps right now. What that should hopefully do is um, prevent the copious amounts of hydrogen bubbles on the cathode from ruining the manganese surface just by producing them at a lower rate. And then the second thing I did um, was add a very, very small amount of sulfuric acid to the cathode compartment, just acidifying it a tiny little bit. Um, this seems to have worked really well in generating a nice smooth coat of manganese. Uh, so we'll get a look at that right now. If we take out our cathode from the cell, you can see that we do definitely have a relatively smooth coating of what we believe to be manganese metal uh, on our titanium strip. Uh, it's looking like a relatively good coating. Uh, it seems to have adhered very well. So we'll leave this going. Um, I think this is doing a good job. And that's that. Everything's moving along nicely. With the low current that we are running the cell at, I think we're gonna to have to keep it going for possibly at least a day in order to get a decent deposit of manganese on our cathode. So it's a long, slow process, but hopefully um, the manganese should just keep plating as well as it has been over the past two hours uh, for the rest of the time that we run the cell. I do suspect that we will have to constantly acidify our catholite solution. Uh, because as the cathode generates hydrogen gas, it also generates hydroxide ions, uh, which basify the solution. And having a basic solution will precipitate manganese hydroxide, which we don't want, and will also seem to ruin the coating of manganese. With that said, uh, there's not really much else to say about the cell that I haven't said in my previous video on the topic. So we will just probably, hopefully, skip forward to when we have completed the deposition of manganese onto our titanium. Okay, two days on and I have some bad news. I have not been able to get a thick coating of manganese to plate onto our titanium cathode, I'm afraid. Over the past 48 hours, I've tried uh, many ways to try to actually get our metal plating on to the cathode. I've tried low current density, I've tried high current density, I've tried making the catholite acidic, I've tried making the catholite neutral, um, none of which seem to give reliable results. 
what seems to happen at high current density is the manganese starts to flake off the electrode. At low current density we don't get much manganese at all. Um, if we let the solution become too acidic um, then the manganese just ends up re-dissolving into solution because manganese is quite reactive and will react with um, the sulfuric acid present. Um, if we let the solution go neutral um, what starts to happen is because of the hydroxide ions generated as a byproduct of hydrogen formation on the cathode um, we generate manganese hydroxide um, which kind of coats the electrode and ruins our manganese plating. If we actually get a look at our cathode now you'll be able to see that it's definitely not coated in metal but this kind of orangey grey um, manganese hydroxide that has formed on the cathode surface. You can see a little bit of manganese underneath right at the top uh, but running the cell for a long time uh, just seems to make this manganese hydroxide which ruins the whole thing. So it seems like the simple conditions that we want to run our cell at uh, just aren't good enough to get a good thick coating of manganese onto our titanium. The best results I got were having the cell at a very mildly acidic state um, so that the manganese could actually plate onto the cathode without forming the manganese hydroxide but very quickly um, because of the hydroxide that forms on the cathode um, it turns neutral and starts to generate manganese hydroxide so I'd either have to uh, dropwise add acid every hour or so which is very tricky I mean if we're running this cell for 48 hours I need to sleep I can't just sit here for uh, the whole 48 hours of running the cell and add acid every hour or maybe I think a much more reasonable way forward is to buffer the pH of the cell uh, so that it maintains that pH of around 6 uh, and maybe add some stirring to the catholite chamber. Sadly I don't have enough time to run this experiment again so we're not going to be able to do that for at least the next few months which is disappointing. Uh, I think we're going to have to leave this project here and come back to it another time. I'm going to give up now, pack up the cell, and um, I guess we'll just be leaving this video on a slightly sad note um, that we weren't able to make a manganese plated titanium strip. Actually, before we finish the video, um, there's one mildly interesting thing to show you about the manganese hydroxide that we've made. Uh, I'll get the cathode here. Uh, you can see all of the manganese hydroxide coating the electrode there. Um, if we watch it for a while, um, I'll set up a time lapse in a sec, we'll be able to see it um, turn much darker because manganese hydroxide, unlike most other manganese 2 plus salts, actually oxidizes uh, really quite quickly in contact with air. Uh, I think it oxidizes to manganese dioxide but um, it could also be just a higher oxidation state hydroxide as well. Anyway, if we watch this for a minute or two we should see this um, whitish orange manganese hydroxide uh, turn black. So I'll set the time lapse up now. Well there we go, that was slightly interesting I suppose. You can see most of the whitish orange um, manganese hydroxide has converted into this brownish black solid here. Anyway, I'm going to have a long think about how we can make this process better and actually make some manganese on our titanium. Uh, I think maybe the best option is to definitely try to buffer the solution that we're electrolyzing. Um, maybe just to take a whole different approach, I guess a thermite reaction might be a good option too to generate large quantities of manganese. Uh, but for now, I'll see you later.